It's week one and college football is back. Jonathan Duran here inside the NCCU Sports Network studio as the Eagles get ready to take on North Carolina A&T State University in the Dukes Mayo Classic in Charlotte, North Carolina, Bank of America Stadium, the site of the contest. Over 30,000 people projected to be there. 7.30 p.m. kickoff live Saturday, September 3rd. A lot really ahead for both of these teams. First time that they've met to start the year in a while. Used to play this game at Carter Finley Stadium, neutral site. Moved to the campuses and now here, neutral site once again in the limelight. Also, a game that'll be nationally televised. Coach Oliver talks about this team being a new team, a different team from last year. And also talking about the fact that it's great that this team is you know, fully healthy. It'll be the first time they can take on a and while fully healthy for a long time. As this game being the first game of the season. Last year was after the Eagles had Alcorn State in the MEAC SWAC Challenge. After they went on the road to Marshall. And now they get everybody healthy and ready to go. we got a good show ahead of you today. Got head coach Trey Oliver, offensive coordinator Matt Leone, and the new defensive coordinator Courtney Cord. So we talked to them about what's ahead for the Eagles, and we're talking sandwiches as well with the Dukes Mayo Classic. We'll go ahead and get things going with head coach Trey Oliver. Here's our conversation with him this week. Coach, it's nice to see you again as we start this 2022 football season. Yeah, good morning, man. Whenever I see you, I know what time it is, so I know it's football season. Ready to kick this thing off, man, but good seeing you this morning. And as always, making our way to game time, which is it's always an electric feeling to think about. Man, it's... It's Eagle football game day. And to start the season with North Carolina A&T, what better way to do it? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, uh, uh, back in the day, we used to always, um, well, I think initially it was on Thanksgiving weekend. But uh, when I was in school, we always opened the season with them. And um, uh, I, I really like that. So, so uh, you know, we get an opportunity to play them this year healthy. Um, late in the season last year, last two years, we were kind of banged up. So, um, we're excited to play them uh, the first game of the season to you know, kick this 2022 campaign off. This is Jonathan Dern with Eagles head coach Trey Oliver. We'll talk a little bit more about the rivalry and the history of the rivalry a little later on in our conversation. But first, coach, we're getting ready for a new year. That means new players. Sometimes you get some returning players as well, including Davius Richard. You know, he's somebody who's going to be highlighted as somebody to lead the office along with Mookie Collier. And on the defensive side, you got Brandon Codrington coming back. Coach, these returners, how have they really been able to impact and help to lift this program? Well, you know, we recruited some, some I think, not just talented young men, but really good character, high character young men uh, in the program. And, um, uh, you know, I, I've, I've said it before, I'm not huge on transfers. We'll take a couple here and there, but I'd like to get the 17, 18 year, year old kid and, and develop him. So uh, it's good to have these guys back. A lot of guys we had last year were banged up, um, so they'll be able to return this year. Um, so we're we're excited in, about the direction of the program. So yeah, you're able to recruit some new players to come in. What can you say about some of the new guys that are going to be stepping into some roles this year? Uh, well, we have you know one that's really come in and 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 um, made an immediate impact is Zai Simpson. Uh, he's out of South Carolina, um, but he's come in and 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 uh, looks like he's going to going to um, has solidified a starting position at the offensive line. Um, and then we had a JUCO transfer, Christian Mosley. Um, uh, great young man. You ever see him, you always got a smile on his face. Uh, but he's a game changer, and he can absolutely fly. So uh, he'll be a good change up uh, back there in the backfield with, you know, Mookie Collier <clears throat> um, and those guys. All right, Coach, let's go through the units here. Let's start on the defensive side. Brandon Codrington's coming back, strong linebacker core. How has the camp gone for the defensive side of the ball? What's going well? Uh, Co- Coach Cord has come in, and um, I think he's really simplified some things. Uh, so the guys, you know, don't have to, you know, think quite as much. They can kind of, you know, just play. And now you see these guys' athletic ability, you know, really show up. So uh, we're just trying to keep stuff simple, especially for the, you know, the early part of the season. Um, uh, but you know, uh, Brandon Codrington, and I think our secondary is probably the strength of the defense right now, uh, just because we have so much experience back there. He and uh, Manny Smith and um, uh, uh, KB, Khalil Baker, and those guys. So, um, and then we have some young guys. Isaiah Lawson has really, really come in, come in, and uh, Cole Jones. Those guys have really stepped up, and they'll be um, a great addition for our, our our defense moving forward. And on the offense, of course, 
Uh, you have Davius Richard coming back and Mookie Collier, who's going to be starting into that one running back role. And you have Devin Smith, Trevion Pratt coming back as well. I mean, the offense seems like they're going to be primed and ready to go this year. Yeah, we have some weapons. And, I, you know, I'm going to say this right here. It starts up front. And um, uh, this is our first time that we've been, you know, relatively healthy at the offensive line position and uh, have some quality depth. Uh, so we have um, really about two deep there. We're, we're much bigger. Um, we're athletic and we're much stronger up front. And that's where it starts. So uh, the Corey Bullocks, the Torcelli Simpkins, um, Robert Mitchell, Kadeem Du, you know, those guys, um, Daquan Thomas, and like I said, Zai Simpson, we we have some guys up front, and that's where it starts. And then um, at the skill position, uh, there's a lot of guys that stepped up, so we I can't wait to see. Joaquin Davis, Quentin McCall are younger guys that had an outstanding camp. Of course, you have, the, the you know, Devin Smith and Andrew Smith that, you know, always show up. Um so, you know, I, I'm excited, man. We have some weapons on offense, and uh, I think we should be able to score a lot of points this year. And, Coach, you always talk about winning in all three phases. Special teams, you got two guys, or actually really three guys, who can flip the field for North Carolina Central. You've got Velarde coming back to punt. You have Olivo here still as a place kicker, and Brandon Codrington, who can turn games on their heads, both by sending the ball away and by taking it back. So special teams, how are they looking this year? Um, yeah, they, we made some plays in the kicking game last year, but, you know, um, obviously we missed a couple of kicks against that, you know, that South Carolina State game that, that really hurt us. So uh, we've really been preaching consistency um, in our with our kicking game. Um, and we know if, if you know, Kodrick gets the ball in his hands, he can he can definitely make plays. Uh, but I'm definitely pleased with Olivio and um, Juan Velarde. Um, but, you know, we just have to be consistent throughout the season. Jonathan Duran with the Eagles head coach Trey Oliver as we're making our way towards kickoff. First game of the season, the Eagles against North Carolina A&T in Charlotte. Duke's Mayo Classic at Bank of America Stadium. Coach, I know you get the question a lot of times about what it was like with you being at North Carolina A&T and coaching. So I think we can skip that this time around. But you mentioned about how this game used to be played at a neutral site. It used to be played at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. So what is the feel and this vibe for this game, in your opinion, as the Eagle Aggie Classic returns to a neutral site venue and to an NFL venue for the first time in a while? I think it's an outstanding opportunity for our young men. Uh, when we recruit them, you know, we talk about being able to play in classics. We talk about being able to play in uh, venues such as this. And, you know, when you come to HBCUs, uh, I don't think we get enough credit for, you know, the, what we do here. Um, you know, a lot of schools, you know, PWIs don't have these opportunities. So um, obviously it helps with recruiting. Um, I think it's outstanding for our both fan bases that, that, you know, all the fans that want to come to the game can attend. A lot of times when it's on campus, it sells out and, and not, not everybody can get in. But um, it's great to play this game in a venue. And then, you know, just the magnitude of the game, it just, I think it just makes it better. All right, coach, let's go ahead and talk about that school to the west of us. I mean, they're projected to be number one in the Big South. As a matter of fact, the Eagles have – Two of the top two teams, the two the top two projected teams in the Big South on the calendar this year in North Carolina A and T and Campbell. So a strong test already in non conference, and we've seen what North Carolina A and T can do on the field over the last few years. What do you see from them this time through? Well, you know they're a good program, and I think they're a well coached team. Um, but I'll say this: we are a different football team than we were last year. Um, I think we're more talented. We have we're a faster team, and we're a healthy team. Um, but you know, they're, 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 a, they're a good football program there and they're, they're going to come to play. They play hard, they're a physical bunch and they're a confident bunch. Um, so we had to come in. I think we had to start fast, uh, make some plays early on and keep our composure, but our guys are excited and I, I'm sure we'll play well. All right, coach, you mentioned about playing fast and keeping composure, but you can go a little more in depth. What are the keys to victory for North Carolina central against North Carolina A&T? Well, on both sides of the ball, we have to win up front. And, um, you know, they have a very good offensive line. Uh, so our defensive line, our linebackers are going to have to stay in their gaps and, and you know, fit the run properly. Um, offensively, we got to, you know, same thing, we got to run the football. We've got to be able to run the football, um, protect Pee Wee, keep him upright, and then just get the, the ball in our playmakers' hands. Uh, sometimes as coaches, we can kind of uh, do too much and drop all these plays and all these schemes and all that stuff. You know, it's football. We've been playing this game for 100 years. You know, it's, it's about blocking and tackling. Um, so, uh, you know, we got to get the ball in our playmakers' hands and let them guys go to work. And I, we have some playmakers, and, and I'm 
very confident that our guys will, will, will play well Saturday. All right, Coach, I'm going to get you out of here on this one. We're playing in the Duke's Mayo Classic. What's your go-to sandwich? My go-to sandwich? Club sandwich, man. Yeah, go-to sandwich going to be a club sandwich with a little bit of mayo on there. Yeah, turkey, maybe a slice of ham or two and some bacon. Yeah, lettuce, depending on the date, tomato or not. But, uh, yeah, that's it, man. But I'm a sandwich guy, man, so you can't go wrong with a good sandwich. You really can't go wrong. I'm right there with you, Coach. All right, hopefully we'll be able to split a nice club sandwich after a W this weekend. Coach, yeah, we good go. luck. Sounds good, man. Thank you. That's Eagle football head coach Trey Oliver. Now let's keep it moving and get to our defensive keys to the game. We had an opportunity to sit down for the first time with the new coordinator, Courtney Cord. And here's our talk about the Eagle defense of where they've been over the summer and what's ahead for them here in this game and the keys for the Eagles defensively. First year here with the program. Coach, welcome to the Scoping Hills in Verdant Green. Thank you. It feels good to be back at a, at a place uh, I call home and, and where it all started for me. Feels good. Thank you. All right, Coach, can you give the Eagle fans a little bit about yourself as you start here? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm coming uh, my first year here at uh, North Carolina Central as a defensive coordinator, defensive line coach. And uh, like I said, it just feels good to be back at a place where it all started for me. Uh, the opportunity I had to come here and, and gain an education uh, and play football uh, is only the reason why I'm here to be able to sit in front of you uh, as a defensive coordinator, D-line coach today. Um, so I'm very honored, very thankful uh, and grateful for this opportunity, um, you know, to be back uh, and give back and pour into the young men that we have on, on, uh, on the team. And with that background, I know that you're pretty ready to go against these Aggies on Saturday. We'll talk a little bit about North Carolina a and in this interview, but coach, let's go ahead and focus in on the Eagles. Summer's over, week one's here. Defense, how are they looking? Are we looking pretty good? Um, you know, it, coming in, uh, the main goal was to keep it simple. And that's what we've been doing since day one, uh, just trying to change the mindset of the guys. Um, we don't want guys out there thinking on the field. We want guys playing fast uh, for 60 minutes. And uh, that's what we've been doing uh, since I stepped foot on campus. We have a great defensive staff. Coach Oliver has done a great job of piecing together uh, the defensive staff, offensive staff, uh, as well as the special team staff. Um, so we've been keeping it simple, uh, just trying to change the mindset of, of our defensive uh, side of the football uh, and just really um, making sure these guys understand what it takes to win. Uh, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of sacrifices. You know, I talk to the guys all the time about uh, it's the price to pay to be great and how much are you willing to pay. Um, so every time we step foot on that field, they know uh, they got to pay a uh, special price to be great. Um, you know, so we talk about winning one day at a time, one week at a time, one game at a time. And that's our main focus is just taking it one day at a time. And, um, you know, it's not about anybody else. It's about us. And um, that's what that's how we're approaching this first game. Well, Coach, you've got some players coming back who have already paid that toll to be on that road to greatness with Jesse Malik. Quantez Manfield, Cole Jones, Brandon Codrington, a lot of players who can help to lead this defense. The returners, how have they been able to impact this program and also to help some of the new players coming along? Oh, those guys have been those guys have been great. Um, you know, as coaches, we understand that um, if the players are leading the team, then you, you, you're doing something right. The coach is very right. Um, and that's what we have here. Those guys, they're not afraid to step on toes. Um, you know, if, 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 if it's one of their buddies or if it's a young guy, um, they do a great job of leading by example and being vocal uh, when the time calls for them to. Uh, we're very honored to have those guys on our, on our team. And then some new players coming in to the rotation as well. What do you think they will be able to do for this program? Well, everybody. Uh, we, we, we want everybody to contribute. Uh, we, we would like everybody – um, to play their role, understand their role, and, and, and do it well. Um, you know, I talk to the guys all the time about, you know, you have a job to do. It's not only good to do your job, you must do your job well. So whether you're a freshman, whether you're a coach, whether you're a senior, uh, it doesn't matter. You have a job to do. You have you have a role to do. And uh, you have to do that, that job and play your role uh, to the best of your abilities on a consistent basis. Um, so everybody, we're, we're leaning on everybody to play their part 
and uh, do their job well. Coach, I think one of the longest standing rivalries has always been red versus blue, maroon against blue, coming up once again, 100th anniversary of it. North Carolina a and projected to be number one in the Big South. This Eagle team this year got two of the top teams in the Big South in North Carolina a and and Campbell. So early test, really, to test the metal of this program. But first up, North Carolina a and what have you seen from them offensively? Uh, they keep it simple. Everybody in the country know what they're going to do. They're going to try and run the football. Um, so that's what they do. They, they're not going to try and do anything to um, – out, out, out psych they sells or, you know, the defense. Um, everybody in the stadium know they're going to run the football. They're going to take shots uh, with their receivers. Uh, they're a 50-50 back shoulder fade type of team. They got big receivers. Uh, but the strength of their offense is um, probably the offensive line and their running backs. Um, the offensive line is, is very good, uh, very big, uh, very strong. Um, and, and they got some guys um, that can carry the ball as well to, to, to run behind that good offensive line. Um, you have an experienced quarterback in Jalen Fowler, um, who's the quarterback of the Dagon team. You know, he's not just the offense, he, he's the quarterback of the team. I'm not sure what guy we're going to face, um, whether it's Jalen or Zach Yeager. Um, so it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, we'll be ready to go. Um, but they're a good offensive team. They keep it simple. They're going to try and run the football and take shots when, when, when they need to. All right, Coach, what are the defensive keys for North Carolina Central to be successful? First of all, we, we have to get lined up. Um, I think if we get lined up, we, we, give, to ourselves, we give ourselves a chance. Um, and then we have to be disciplined. Uh, we have to maintain our gaps. Um, and we got to stop the run. But like I said, we know what they're going to do. They're going to try and run the football. And uh, we have to be gap sound across the board. And we, we, we have to put a dent in the line of scrimmage. Um, and we, we have to play hard. Uh, for 60 minutes. Um, from a secondary standpoint, we, we can't give it up in one one chunk play. Um, so we're going to play the worst first. We're going to stay over top of those routes um, and we got to get a good pass for us. So definitely uh, looking forward to, to the challenge and to the opportunity uh, playing a playing a good North Carolina a t team. Um, but we'll be ready to go. All right, Coach. Well, the Eagles are going to be competing in the Dukes Mayo Classic. We'll get you out of here on this. What's your go-to sandwich? My go-to sandwich? Oh man. Uh, so I, I I don't eat meat. I'm vegan. Um, but if I had to, if I had to pick a sandwich, uh, I like a fried oyster mushroom sandwich. It's kind of a spin on a po' boy. Um, for my vegans out there, they understand what I'm talking about. All right, coach. Hey, love it. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll be able to split lunch over a victory coming up. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. You too. All right. So there are the defensive keys for North Carolina Central. Now let's move to the offensive side of the ball. Here is O coordinator Matt Leone. Coach, summer's over. The leaves are starting to turn. It's football season once again for North Carolina Central. It's really good to be able to sit down with you again. Jonathan, it's, it's great to be in front of you. Uh, it, you know it's football season when, when we, we get to jump on this thing together and, and talk about uh, the upcoming game. Oh, yeah, and the upcoming game, it's its a big one. It's North Carolina a and t It's been a while since so it's been the first game of the year for North Carolina Central and the Aggies, and it's going to be played in Charlotte. First time it's been played in a, in a neutral site for a while as well, and for it also to be at an NFL venue is going to be a really big experience. But we'll talk a little bit more about the game a little later on. Let's go back and rewind a little bit, go back to the summer. You got some returning players here, of course, with Davius Richard leading the way with – a host of all conference players, both on the offensive and defensive and special team side for North Carolina Central. Just really star studded team coming back this year, according to the, the preseason uh, preseason selections. But Davius Richard, Mookie Call, you're coming back, Andrew and Devin Smith. Coach, you got some weapons for you. Yeah, yeah, we do. We um, you know, we're very fortunate to have those guys play um, as, as young players. You know, so they've got some game experience and, uh, you know, they've really developed and come on strong um, throughout the season last year. And it's nice to have some now veterans that, that know what they're doing, um, are confident in what they're doing and in the scheme itself. You talk about the veterans, all those players coming back. How have they helped to lead some of the newer players coming into the fold? 
Oh, they've done, they've done a tremendous job, you know, for, for everybody, this is their second year really in the system. So there's some familiarity and now everybody's not learning the system at the same time. So you really start to see those leaders develop because now they're echoing the same thing that the coaches would be echoing, or they, they may be meeting with the, the young guys um, themselves and um, kind of coaching them up on the offense where, when you're installing something for the first time and nobody really knows, it's, it's hard for those, those leaders to, uh, to help those young guys because they're learning it at the same time. Right, Coach, I want to go ahead and jump in here on Mookie Collier. I think if you look back at North Carolina Central over the last five, ten years, you know, some people could really say this has been, you know, running back you with some of the guys that have come through here. And now it's Mookie's turn. He's listed as number one on the depth chart. How is he looking coming into this year? And also Jamari Taylor, who'll be listed as number two. Mookie has had a great offseason. Um, you know, when you go back and just look at last season, uh, Mookie had a lot of production and, um, you know, probably should have got more carries than he ended up with last year. Um, but we were more of a running back by committee um, last year, and we had some good players in here with, with uh, Isaiah Totten and, and Jordan Freeman. Uh, so he's really taken on that leadership role in that room and uh, has, has, again, worked extremely hard. We're excited to see uh, what Mookie does, carrying the, the blunt of the, of the uh, role in that, in that room. And then we've got some young guys in there that's been coming along. Um, so we've got great depth in that room. Jamari Taylor, as you mentioned, is number two on the depth chart. And uh, he's, had, he's had a phenomenal spring practice and carried over into fall camp. So uh, we're very confident in, in his ability. And then we have um, Christian Mosley, who's uh, he's that change of pace back. And uh, he's got great long speed, uh, good um, change of direction. And then uh, the next guy would be Josh Pullen, who's our big back. Um, you know, he runs with low pads and have a fight for, for those tough yards. And then turnover also at the tight end position, two brand new guys coming in to replace two guys that brought in a lot of production last year. And they'll be part of the reception crew with Davius Richard, the signal caller, and he'll be working with the offensive line. Coach Oliver said it all starts up front. And so that O-line, the tight ends, how are they looking to be this year? You know, it's, it's exciting the fact that we're, we're getting healthy up front. Um, last year, it was a struggle. Uh, we went through most of the season with about seven guys. So um, it's nice to have, you know, our guys um, healthy and ready to roll. Um, same thing up front. We, we return experience now. Um, you know, Torcelli Simpkins was a, was a freshman for us at center and started every game for us uh, last season. Um, Corey Bullock has had a great camp. Um, you know, he's, he's a very versatile. He can play all five spots and a high football IQ. Um, so we're excited that he's, he's back and healthy. Uh, of course, the, the Quan Thomas right, right tackle, um, he's, he's been solid for us. Um, does a great job in pass protection as well as the run game. And, and uh, he played a lot of snaps for us last year. And then um, Rob Mitchell. He was, he was one that got hurt second game of the season last year, so we didn't have him at all. And, um, you know, he's he's back in full strength and ready to roll. And then uh, Zy, Zy um, Simpson is is a transfer that came in here. He's competed very hard all camp long, and he'll be starting for us at left guard this game. And then uh, Kadeem, is, uh, he's also back, uh, started a lot of games for us last year at left tackle. Um, he's coming over, uh, coming off of illness, um, but shoot, he's he's in the in the fold as well, and we expect him to be ready to go on Saturday. All right, coach, and then Davius Richard, quarterbacks and quarterbacks always get a lot of attention. Always, so Davius, we saw him take a step forward in his sophomore year. What's the next step for him this year? You know. Uh, just continue to, to grow and develop in, in the system, not try to do too much. Um, you know, he, he, he has made some big strides last year and um, playing with a lot of confidence. Um, the biggest thing to remember for him is he, he doesn't have to go out there and win the game for us. Uh, we just want him to, 
to do his part. And, um, you know, the other 10 guys on the field do their part. And collectively, you know, we're going to get it done together. So not not to go out there and think he's got to make big plays for us to win the game. Just just allow the plays to happen and uh, do what, do what uh, you know, your coach to do per the play. Um, and, he, and he does that. Um, he makes good decisions with the football, um, you know, not and not put us in a situation where, you know, we're turning the ball over or uh, we're pressing too much. Just just play within himself, and and the pl big plays will will happen. They'll take care of themselves. Jonathan Dern with the Eagles offensive coordinator Matt Leone getting ready for this game against North Carolina A and T. Coach the Aggies listed as the team expected to win the Big South. They're expected to finish ahead of Campbell, who the Eagles also have on the calendar this year. But the Aggies, what do you see out of them defensively as you get ready for this game? You know, they uh, they keep their scheme simple, and and uh, which allows those guys to play fast. Um, they're a physical group. Uh, they're built to stop the run. Um, they're very active up front. Um, and then they return they return some some good players. Um, Number three, he wore 93 for him last year at defense van. He's a really good player for him. Number 13, at inside linebacker, um, he's a, their signal caller on, on, on defense, and uh, he's, he's a good player. And then in, in the secondary, I know they've got some, some new guys back there. I know they returned uh, one of their corners from last year, number 24, and they got a transfer who played at Kansas, played, some, played quite a bit for uh, uh, Kansas as a freshman. So had some production so we're expecting him to be out there as well so um they're they're a good football team they play extremely hard and um you know we've we've got our work cut out for us but we are we're ready for the challenge all right coach where are the keys for north carolina central to be successful offensively number one is to protect the football um you know we can't squander opportunities and uh we we must make sure we we protect protect the ball and uh Number two, we, we want to start fast. Um, you know, we can't we can't come out and and uh, you know have three and outs. You know, we got to move the football and and create some explosive plays. And then um, the third would be stay in front of the chains. You know, we got to win first down, and then execute on third down and, and stay on the field. And uh, if we we win first down, execute on third down, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be able to get in the end zone. All right, Coach, we'll get you out of there, out of, out of here on this for playing in the Duke's Mayo Classic. What's your go-to sandwich? Ooh, uh, ham and Swiss. Yeah, ham and Swiss is that's – a, that's a solid choice right there. Definitely, definitely my go-to. All right, Coach, thank you so much for your time. Hope to be chopping it up over lunch next week. All right, thank you, Jonathan. That's offensive coordinator Matt Leone. Before that, you heard defensive coordinator Courtney Cord and the Eagles head coach, Trey Oliver. All right, so let's look to see what's happening in the MEAC this weekend. One game already played. South Carolina State defeated at UCF 56-10. to You got 6 o'clock on Saturday. Battle of the Real HU. Howard on the road at Hampton at Armstrong Stadium. And other games happening on Saturday. Lincoln of Pennsylvania at Dell State at Alumni Stadium in Dover. That's at 2 o'clock. 3.30, Norfolk State at Marshall. 6 o'clock, Morgan State at Georgia Southern. And, of course, the Eagle game, 7.30 against North Carolina A&T. All right, so taking a look at the weather here in Charlotte, about mid-80s, mid to high 80s we'll be peaking at over the course of the day once we get to kickoff now. Kickoff in Charlotte, we're looking at about 84 degrees be dipping down into the high 70s. Chance of showers as the game goes on. So you might want to bring a jacket just in case. Not so much the case in Durham. Mid to high 80s in the Bull City. If you're still at home cooking out, don't have anything to worry about. All right, so that just about does it for our show here. North Carolina Central and the Aggies still getting ready for that game on Saturday night. Hope to see you at Bank of America Stadium. And if not, hope that you enjoy the tailgate at home, in the Bull City, or wherever you are listening around Eagle Nation. I'm Jonathan Duran. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend. We'll see you next week.